Hey man, say man, you already know what I'm finna say, man. It's your boy Cash Carter GTG. Checking in, never checking out for sure. I gotta go. And you know, we coming back with some more real deal trill. So today, man, we got a back and forth going on between Florida and, and Texas, Houston, and Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, Tampa. Basically, on who created the, the slow down music. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's, it's no secret that the slow down in the chops, that's for sure Houston. But a lot of people trying to figure out where exactly did it start, who did it first. Because there's a lot of people in Florida saying like, hey, we were slowing down music in the early 90s. And you got people in Houston like, man, we've been slowing down before that. So apparently, after, you know, checking in with a lot of the OGs, we actually have found out that... Houston have been doing it since the early 80s with uh, a DJ named uh, DJ Daryl Scott, who was actually slowing down music, slowing down R&B music and things of that nature. And he also had a, um, not a predecessor, but a, a another guy who was doing it at the same time, but they was in competition with it out of Houston named DJ Prince. You know, they was doing that. And DJ Screw, Robert Earl Davis, was actually the one who kind of threw the chops in there. And he came with the whole swag of the, uh, of the Screw music, the lean that went perfectly with it. They say he actually was using a actual screw to actually break, break and bend and slow down the turntables when he was actually chopping, screwing the music, and it came with the culture of the serve, you know what I mean, the the the, the candy paint, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the trunks open with the words on it, all that stuff, you know, a lot of words like, uh, a lot of words like catching stains, a lot of words like uh, trenches, a lot of these words that we talk about now, and we say now that we think might have originated in Chicago, so a lot of these words actually came from Houston. Now, we get Florida jits, but that's not really something people say in Houston. But catching stains and gripping wood and, and, and uh, let me see. It's, it's, it's a lot of words. If you listen to, if you listen to the, 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 the DJ screw and, and everybody in his, uh, in his crew, uh, Zero, Fat Pack, uh, Big Hawk, Pokey, um, um, Mike D, Lil Kiki, uh, um, I mean, you could, we could go all the way to Lil Flip. If you look at a lot, if you listen to that, listen to a lot of they lingo, a lot of the words that we say today, they been saying, like, I couldn't believe it. I was listening to, uh, um, I was listening to Big Hawk the other day, and I'm like, man, he sound like he in 2024. So, um, you know, it, we, it's a it's a lot of the culture and a lot of the, a lot of the slang that was actually taken by people in Atlanta and people in Florida and spread it around. You know, New Orleans have New Orleans, Louisiana have always kind of had their own little touch or whatever. But even with the way that they, you know, roll clean like some South Side players, you know, was also influenced by Houston. So you know. Uh, Houston has actually influenced a lot of the game, and we do know about like the the Paul Wall and the Mike Jones era that was like that was like stolen by Atlanta. But what we don't know is the early 2000s, the 90s, and the early 90s. A lot of that culture and language was was had been stolen. You gotta understand. Think about it now. What what your girl say about Houston? Your girl gonna call Houston the adult playground. That's the nickname the rest of the nation have for Houston. They call it the adult playground. So just imagine the influence that they're gonna have with a name like that. But uh, you know, I had to come and break it down, man, for the OGs, man. So like I said, man, keep it trill, man. Tap in, man. Hey, man, say, man. Y'all already know what I'm finna say, man.